Hey folks, Peter Steele here with Hearts of Iron 4. Today I have a little guide for you as Britain. Specifically, we're going to make the United Kingdom fascist without triggering a civil war and without losing the dominions. Now this is done in the Man the Guns patch, but it should also work in the upcoming La Resistance as well. What we're going to be doing is uh, running <coughs> the focus a change of course, followed immediately by the black shirts, and after that we're just going to stop using focuses to bank as much political power as we can. After having done organized black shirts, we're only going to be using political power for the anti-German speech decision, which will boost our weekly stability, and the call to call for restraint uh, decision to keep the negative effect of our marches in check. Anything else is going to have to wait because we will want as much political power as we can. Now the key to all this will be to keep stability over 50% to prevent a civil war from triggering. And a few events are going to help us achieve that. First off, our current king, King George V, is going to die and be replaced with King Edward. And those of you who are familiar with history will know that Edward will eventually step down and be replaced by a different George. Now, when Edward steps down and right before our new George takes over, there should be a brief period when your stability is between 90 and 95%. In that window, you're going to want to trigger your big march on London. That's going to be the first march you do. And even if that march takes you below 50%, uh, George taking over should bump your stability back over 50 quickly enough to prevent the civil war from triggering. After that, you keep repeating the other marches, either the big ones or several smaller ones, depending on how you feel, how comfortable you are with this mechanic, until you're around 45% fascist. After that, we're gonna let the British Union of Fascists tick up naturally, until we have 50%. Now, when we have 50%, we're not immediately going to trigger our March on Downing Street. That's the decision that will turn you fascist. But you're going to have to, you're going to want to make sure you have around 400, maybe a little more political power, because we will need that political power for the decisions associated with move to security dominions. Other than that, we're going to need our military for that part of the guide. As for the army, we're going to group up all of our starting units and convert every single one of them to this basic infantry division here. The one that has 9,600 manpower. Um, this will be for easier number crunching down the line. And we're also going to be following up with training uh, about an additional 15, maybe 20 divisions. You want to make want to make sure you don't use up all your manpower, because the units we've converted recently will need manpower to fill up, and we want them to be full or near to full. So we trigger the conditions for the decisions that are going to be following. Now, we're going to want to organize the army as follows. You need about 14 divisions in Canada, 12 divisions in South Africa, another 12 in Australia, 6 in New Zealand, and 29 divisions in India. Now, I'll put the exact spread of units up, uh, what provinces they should go to or what states they should go to. I'll put that up on the screen for you for easy reference. Uh, now, with your starting... 36 divisions you can't possibly garrison all these areas at the start of the game <clears throat> but this is a good place to start from i'll start organizing the army now and i'll uh, get back to you when that's done And through the magic of editing, we're back. We have organized the black shirts and have access to the relevant decisions here. 
Now, as you can see, I've organized my uh, military into four armies. One in Canada, this one in South Africa, this one in New Zealand, and these last four are the initial units I'll be deploying to Australia. Um, you'll notice that I don't have an army for India yet. That's simply because I've run out of troops to deploy. Uh, Production-wise, I've just gotten rid of everything that's not guns, artillery, or support equipment, as these are the only things we'll need to get those initial divisions equipped. Construction-wise, I've just gone with uh, some basic construction of military factories in our home areas, uh, like London, the Midlands, Sussex, because these have the, the highest infrastructure. Uh, these few factories will definitely be a great help because we'll need a lot of guns, as you can see, a lot of guns to equip our troops. Uh, meanwhile, I have been training new divisions, and if you've set them to high priority like I have, uh, they will be ready to start deploying manually by now. You can use the first eight divisions to round out your Australian garrison, and anything after that should be used to start an Indian garrison. Now, if you have trouble finding all the states for India mentioned earlier, it is a very large area. You can go to this uh, arrow button here near the minimap, click on states, and then pop over to India, and you should have an easier time of finding uh, the specific states you want to garrison. Now, these initial units you're going to deploy there, try and deploy them as far inland, like Kashmir, Delhi, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but you want to pr uh, deploy them there and away from the coastline. Reason for that is, quite simply, there's a, a hidden timer that we have to beat before India declares its independence. So we're gonna have to limit the travel time of units. Now these first units going there, they won't be affected by that timer as we still got plenty of time left. Uh, they'll be supported quickly by our South African garrison, as South Africa is somewhat fascist already and will be very easy to flip. You want to move those 12 units over to India as well, inland if possible. And then as Canada, New Zealand and Australia start flipping fascist, you are going to want to rush those troops to India and uh, if the final troops that are arriving only have to garrison port areas or areas near ports, they won't be at risk of arriving too late. So that should help your latecomers uh, make a speedy arrival. Now, as for the marches in the UK, this is a specific mechanic required to flip the, uh, the party to the fascist party. It's going to be a matter, a matter of basic mathematics. We're going to keep using the hold anti-German speech decision, which will boost our weekly stability by 2%, and the urge restraint decision, which will reduce the chances significantly of a violent march. So it will minimize the negative outcome of the marches. Now, after our initial march on London, which you can do around 90% stability, so we're a little bit off here, uh, we can just start doing the biggest marches we can without dropping our stability below 50%. And we're going to keep doing that until we hit 45%-ish fascist support and then let it tick up naturally to 50. Now, if for some reason we are too slow and the change of course modifier here drops off before we naturally reach 50%, we will have to do an additional few marches to get you there. It's, it's not a problem, just keep in mind that we keep stockpiling political power well over 400 before we hit the final decision here, the march on Downing Street that will flip us over to fascist. So, I'll be doing that and I'll see where we end up.
Now, as you can see, if we've done this right, we come out with a massive army compared to uh, our closest competitors. Now, all we have to do to be basically invincible is to rush towards the focuses, consolidate the British Isles and unite the Anglosphere, where we will first annex Ireland to unite the islands. And then basically we declare war on the United States and annex them from Canada. We will outnumber them massively because of our 52 divisions against whatever they have by now. It is still very early, 1937. And once we have taken the US, we are the world's greatest economic power and we can do whatever we want. Now, if you like the video and want to see more like this, hit that like button, consider subscribing and tell me what you would like to see next in the comments. If you disliked it, feel free to press that button and let me know why in the comments. That's all from me, Bittersteel, and I will see you all later. Thank you for watching.